fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When the weather's bad, do you and your friends ever hang around the house wondering what to do? I'll bet it happens lots. Well, you know where you can have the most fun? In the kitchen, with a package of the new Betty Crocker brownie mix. That's right. It's easy as can be to bake up a big batch of luscious chocolatey brownies with Betty Crocker brownie mix. Everything you need is right in the package. Just add one egg if you like the chewy, fudgy kind of brownies. And two eggs if you want them soft and tender like cake. Add nuts, too, if you like. Either way, Betty Crocker brownies are the gee-I-can't-eat-them-fast-enough kind. Even if you've never baked before, you'll turn out scrumptious, chocolatey, perfect brownies the very first time. And what fun you and your gang will have eating brownies that you baked yourselves. Have Mom get Betty Crocker brownie mix next time she shops. Then invite your friends over for some fun. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! Ricky Adams was ten years old, the only child of Maud and Hank Adams of the Double Bar Ranch. In spite of the attention showered upon him by his parents and the ranch hands, Ricky remained unspoiled. He was bright, happy, and alert, ever eager to learn all there was to know about ranching and cow punching. Ricky had many lessons in roping, and even went to the range with the foreman Gabe and practiced roping a calf. One morning, Ricky rode his pony along a trail that bordered a creek. Suddenly, an arrow landed on the trail in front of him and stuck quivering in the ground. Whoa, Brownie! Whoa, boy! Ricky, startled, looked to the right and saw an Indian boy on a spotted pony a short distance away, grinning at him. Come on, Brownie, get up! Ricky spurred his pony with his heels and rode toward the Indian boy, at the same time whirling his lariat. A moment later, he threw it, then stopped and pulled. Whoa, Brownie, whoa! Ricky dismounted and ran to his victim. Are, are you hurt? Me not hurt. You throw a rope good. You shoot arrows well, too. My name's Ricky. I'm ten years old. Me little deer. Me live eleven summers. My dad's a big rancher. Father of little deer. Heap big chief. How did you get here, little deer? Me ride to New Village and Valley. Over hill. I'll show you how to use the rope if you let me use your bow and arrow. Uh, that's good. The two youngsters, instantly friends, played together with the lariat and the bow and arrows for some time, then parted after agreeing to meet again the following morning. Meanwhile, the ranch foreman, Gabe, entered the double bar ranch house. Morning, Gabe. Good morning, ma'am. Hank's having a cup of coffee. Sit down and have some. Yes, I don't care if I do. <laughs> now, what brings you in from the range, Gabe? The engine. What? what? What do you mean, Indians? Land sakes, Gabe. What about Indians? Well, a tribe of them settled in Pine Valley, Comanche. What? Well, they're peaceful enough. But we'll have to watch to make sure they don't take any of our cattle for food. Dag Nabbit! Why do they have to camp there? No, Hank, be reasonable. If they're peaceful Indians, what's the harm? They have to live somewhere. I don't like them so close. As far as I'm concerned, Indians are Indians, and you just can't trust them. Well, there's not much you can do about having them in that valley, Hank, so you might as well calm down and make the best of it. If they cause any trouble, I'll do something about it pronto. Come on, baby. Yeah. I want to ride over and get a look at that Indian village from the ridge. In the nearby town of Muddy Springs, others were interested in the Comanches in Pine Valley. At the cafe... 
Two gunsmiths sat talking to three companions. Folks are talking about engines settling in Pine Valley. Yeah, what about it? Well, it gives me an idea, Sandy. We're listening. All we got to do is wait for a rainy night, then rustle cattle or horses off in one of the big ranches. Them Comanches will be blamed for it. Yeah. You got something there, two guns? <laughs> we'll hold up at the old shack in the hills till we're ready to pull the job. <laughs> Before we're through, every rancher in this territory is going to be up in arms against them redskins. <laughs> that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode the trail along the Pine Valley Ridge. Mukimasabi, Comanche have village and valley. They've picked a nice place to settle, Toto. I hope they keep out of trouble. Ah. Me think that tribe a chief Red Eagle. Him peaceful. Him like the friends to white man. We'll stop to see Red Eagle before we leave this territory. Hope we can pick up Two Gun Smith's trail again before we leave Muddy Springs. At least we know he and his men were headed this way. That's right. We'll camp in the hills near town and try to get a line on them. One hill there! The following morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto were saddling their horses. It is Silver, easy, fella. Easy, fella. Suddenly, Silver whinnied a warning. <laughs> the two men quickly drew and turned as an arrow fell at their feet, and a lariat dropped loosely around the masked man's shoulders. I caught him. That's good. <laughs> Them two little fellas, Kimasabi. Them sneak up through brush. Caught us dead to rights. You're our prisoner. That right. <laughs> We'd better holster our guns, Toto, and reach. Ah, uh. oh, we won't hurt you. You can put your hands down now. Thanks, partner. Uh, how did you two get here? Left our ponies back there and sneak through the bushes. Don't you think it's risky sneaking up on a couple of grown men? We might have been outlaws. Are you outlaws, mister? Is that why you wear that mask? <laughs> no, we're not outlaws. I just like to wear a mask. Now, uh, who are you? I'm Ricky Adams. And this is my best friend, Little Deer. Say, is that Indian your best friend? Yes, Ricky. I'm very glad you have Little Deer as a friend. Ricky, like brother to Little Deer. We meet and play together every day. I better get my rope. <laughs> You're good at roping, Ricky. Gabe taught me. He's Daddy's foreman. I taught Little Deer, and he taught me how to use his bow and arrows. Well, that's fine. Are we still your prisoners? No, nah, we were only playing. <laughs> Does little deer live at Comanche Village and Valley? Me son of Chief Red Eagle. Oh, that's good. We've met your father, the chief. He's our friend. Gosh, I wish you was daddy's friend, too. Then little deer could come home with me sometime. Well, let's hope they'll be friends someday. Will you let us come back here to see you? Why, of course. We'll be camped here another day or two. Thanks, mister. Goodbye. Race you to our ponies, little deer. Come on. <laughs> oh, you won't. Uh, them nice little fellows. Yes. Too bad their elders aren't as tolerant as they are. I hope nothing interferes with their friendship. Let's go, Toto. Easy, easy, easy. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. That night it rained for several hours. The next morning, while Maud and Hank were having breakfast with Gabe. Tex, one of the cowpokes, came to the door. Come in. Mr. Adams, some of the cattle are gone. What? Yeah, you... Rustlers ran them off during the night in the rain. I knew it, I knew it. It was bound to happen. Now, Hank, take it easy. Take it easy? When thieving redskins run off my cattle, you say, take it easy? How do you know the Indians that are blamed? I just know, that's all. <laughs> Tex. Yeah? I want you to ride to the Circle O and the Bar X. Tell what happened and ask him to come here with all hands. Right. Gabe and I will go to the other ranches. By thunder, we'll get 200 men together and give those Comanches a lesson they won't forget. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the half the happy people have to say. Weedies, oh, weedies, and the do, 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 and okay. Okay. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. 
Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin, a passing star with Wheaties style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger, and a Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties And you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-do
The Lone Ranger called out. You ranchers, I have something important to say to your leader. Otto, ask Red Eagle to ride here too, will you? Chief Red Eagle, Wante, Nawahu! For a moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto sat waiting tensely. They realized that they were open targets for bullets or arrows if either ranchers or Indians decided to act against them. Then... Look, Kimasabi, leader of branches and two men come, and them holding guns. Their curiosity got the better of them. I counted on that. Here comes the chief and a few braves, too. Oh, 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 oh. You're covered, masked man. Now, what's this all about? No need for the guns. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Chief Red Eagle, glad to see you, masked white friend. Oh, you're a friend of Red Eagle's, huh? Well, no masked man is going to stop us from doing what we came to do. You better take the masked man and his friend prisoners, Hank. Any white man who'd help Indians rustle cattle ought to be hanged. Cover them and the chief men. Uh, we'll disarm them and take them back as hostages. Wait. We carry a flag of truce. That's just a trick. We'll be... Great day, Gabe. Look, coming toward us. Yeah, Ricky and an Indian boy. Ricky, what are you doing here? Turn around and head for home. Oh, Roddy. Whoa, oh, boy. boy. Oh, boy. Why, little deer ride with pale face boy. Him friend. Little deer's my best friend, Daddy. We have lots of fun together. But why have you come with all those men? And why are you holding guns on our friends, the masked man and Indian? Well, doggone. How'd you get to know these people? Tex, take Ricky back out of harm's way. I don't want to go. I want you and little deer's father to be friends like we are. Well, I'll be... The boy has more sense than you have, Mr. Adams. Listen, you. I don't have to take back talk from a masked owl hoot. Men, take the gun. You wait. Him not outlaw. Him lone ranger. Uh, mask man, good white man. A lone ranger? Uh, can't all right. Me no mask man long time. Him friend of Red Eagle. Him lone ranger. That's right. Hey, I reckon you are at that from the looks of you. Sorry, mister. Put up your guns, men. Uh, mister, I know you try to prevent trouble and help the law. But when thieving Indians run off my cattle... They I'm... didn't steal your cattle. Thanks to your boy and the chief's son, we can lead you and your men to the rustler's hideout and get back your cattle. Golly, mister, were the cattle we saw in a canyon stolen from Daddy? I think so, Ricky. We're ready to ride with you if you're willing, Mr. Adams. Braves of Red Eagle help capture men who steal white man's cattle. I suggest about ten cow hands and ten braves ride with us. We'll move in from each end of that canyon and easily capture the rustlers. Suits me. I'll get my men right away. Uh, me go with brave. Ten ranchers and ten Comanche braves rode with Hank, Red Eagle, the Lone Ranger, and Tonto and surprised Two Gun Smith and his men in the canyon. After a short gun battle, the outlaws were subdued. Well, we got them all. I suggest we tie them to their horses and have some of the men take them to the sheriff. Uh, that good. Comanche braves help drive stolen cattle back to range. Thanks, Chief Red Eagle. All right, men. Let's get busy. Hold it there. Hold on. Hold on. Later, Hank, Gabe, and Chief Red Eagle returned to the valley with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, 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 Hank raised his voice and spoke to the large number of ranchers who had waited there. Men, the rustlers have been caught and the cattle found. They were white crooks, not Indians. Chief Red Eagle and his braves helped capture them. Thanks for coming here with me. I'm satisfied it's safe to go back to your ranches. And from now on, consider the Comanches as neighbors and friends. Red Eagle, I'll go to your village now and get my boy. Get him! Get him! A short time later, they rode into the village and drew rein outside of a large circle of amused braves and squaws. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> I think I see what's amusing them. Let's go closer to the center of the group. A moment later, Hank stood beside Chief Red Eagle and the Lone Ranger as they looked at the cause of the merriment. Oh, watch it! 
Oh, oh, oh. Him hear me call you that. Jimmy. Yes. The boys are sitting there pretending to smoke an empty piece of pipe. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, little dear. Aya, the chief, my father. We go. Wait, wait. You not go. We join Council of Peace with little men. <laughs> with an unaccustomed smile on his lips, the chief beckoned to Hank, and the two men walked solemnly forward and sat beside the boys. Lighting the pipe, Chief Red Eagle puffed it, then passed it to Hank. Father of little pale face smoke him. It mean friendship. It mean peace. Hank hesitated a moment. Go ahead, Daddy. Then you'll be friends with the chief. Well, all right, Ricky, if you say so. Oh, that's good. Now we friends like brothers. Walote! Mao! <laughs> While the Comanches danced in happy celebration, the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved unobserved to their horses. The friendship and boys play of Ricky and Little Deer have brought about a new feeling between the ranchers and Indians here, Tonto. Ah. Sometime, Kimasabi, great spirit use young ones, bring wisdom to old. That's right. Let's go. Easy, Shadi. Easy, fella. Monsieur! Hey, Mister, wait! Well, well, got away before we could thank him. Uh, uh, but friendship him put into our hearts stay to remind us of Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.